start on that end of the room if everybody would like to do introductions just introduce yourself and we'll come around Joe Terry Public Works Director Tom Rome Common Council Dean Veneman committee member Matt Zacher council member Sue Shell City Attorney Sherry Evanson District 5 Ryan Hartman Human Resources Dave Emke Human Committee Human Resources Committee and there will be a, a list of those in attendance on file in the clerk's office and with that we will call the meeting to order at 523 item number two is discuss and consider for approval proposed changes to the vacation policy mr. Hartman thank you mr. Bemke um, just looking to uh, make the process and the vacation policy uh, more efficient for all the employees um, I think this is something that <clears throat> many are aware of that we've been working on with the Munis incorporation uh, to the software it will be advantageous um, what we're looking at doing in quick summary is to move those remaining employees that are on anniversary date uh, vacation when they are awarded to calendar year so putting everybody on a January 1 calendar year um, it just makes it a lot cleaner um, nobody will be losing any time uh, it will make everybody whole the other benefit is they'll start accruing um, uh, vacation on their first day of employment getting rid of the waiting period this also in conjunction with making things more streamlined uh, will also help as a recruiting tool for the city um, as we you know uh, compete for um, employees or candidates uh, in the future um, with other municipalities and, and other potential employers thank you committee members any questions comments three council members questions comments All right, I will. With that, I, I will make a motion to approve the the vacation policy as proposed. Is there a second? A motion and a second. All those in favor? All right. Opposed? I nice have it. Um, item number four. Discuss and consider approval of a pay raise from eight. Fifty to nine dollars an hour for positions in the parks and rec department to assist with recruitment. Ryan, is this yours or okay. did I skip something? Oh, I apologize. Let's go back one to number three. Discuss and consider approval of a policy allowing for police department lieutenant compensation for court time off time while off duty, and there's an attachment. Uh, yes, and Deputy Chief uh, Krakowski and Chief Blevins are here to uh, approach this proposal. Greetings. Good evening. Our lieutenants, our patrol lieutenants, um, on their days off, they are actually in a different situation than our association members. So basically, an association member you know, has to go to court on their time off. They are compensated at a particular rate, a minimum. Um, Court does get canceled. Uh, people actually, when the officers show up at times, the defense attorney, or the prosecuting attorney will dismiss them as they walk in the door or even shortly thereafter. Um, they're compensated at a minimum rate, uh, 2.67 hours a time and a half for the association members. Um, the disparity is with the lieutenants when they go to the, it could be one association member, one lieutenant going to the same court appearance and being dismissed the exact same way, the lieutenant might get 15 minutes of time where the officer, the association member, is getting 2.67 hours at a time and a half. Um, we don't have a lot of, when we have five, uh, five lieutenants and some are having kids or are going to have kids and you have to you know, get daycare or if you have to get other arrangements, um, they're basically losing money to go to court on their time off. Uh, recently came up because one of our night shift lieutenants came in for court and then was quickly dismissed after he stayed up at 5.30, we ended his shift until 9 a.m. when they had court, which once he walked in, they said, okay, the prelim is uh, 
you know, we're waiving it so you can go now. And so he sat up and waited for that and then his compensation is basically about 15 minutes of time. Um, so we're just looking for something similar to what the association members have for a minimum. Any questions from the committee? The language that's included is basically um, the same language for the association members, um, just with filling in as a lieutenant instead. It's attached that you all received. Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now we'll do number four. Discuss and consider for approval a pay increase from eight fifty an hour to nine dollars an hour for the position in parks and recreation department to assist with recruitment. Uh, or Jake. I don't see Jake here. I Oh, Mr. Klingforth, if you would like to come speak to this, uh, but in essence, um, unless there's any questions, what we're looking to do is, again, on a recruitment and retention type uh, purpose for ice pond attendant and the zoo area, just increasing that uh, wage for the seasonal employees, uh, bumping it up 50 cents. Um, looking at Marshfield uh, or municipalities such as Marshfield, they're still a bit higher even than that. Uh, but in our surrounding area, uh, Jake had the proposal that nine would be a good rate to uh, possibly attract a, a few more employees for the winter months. Uh, no, Mr. Herman hit right in the head. Committee? Motion to approve. Motion and a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I say have it. Thank you. Number five, update on IAFF and WRPPA contract bargaining. Uh, Ryan or Sue? Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. We um, had an initial proposal exchanges with both units in the last two weeks. Uh, we do have uh, second meeting scheduled with each in the next two weeks. So things are, are moving along. Um, probably uh, at the next HR meeting, we can go into closed session and, and talk more specific, specifics about exactly where we, where we are. But right now, we've just exchanged an initial proposals. And then our next meeting will just be to give feedback um, <coughs> on those proposals. So we can, uh, we'll put this on the agenda for your next meeting. Any questions? Dean? Okay. On to item six. Um, discuss plan for further COVID-19 policies, protocols, in the event they are needed. Um, Ryan, any updates? Uh, just our, <clears throat> basically a monthly recap. Uh, the the organization of the City of Wisconsin Rapids as a whole, uh, taking into account the employees base, we are doing pretty good um, overall. The employees are doing a better job or continue to do a good job as we get different information. Um, informa the employees seem to be uh, cognizant and doing a, 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 as good a job as can be expected um, given s certain departments that demand you know, certain things of them. Um, so we've been doing good as overall we're keeping an eye on it. Wood County and the city itself is still in a very high risk level. Positivity rate as of today was 12.1% and, and there's 367 active cases in Wood County. Uh, 172 reside in the WRPS school district. Again, as we talked probably at the last council meeting, that is not necessarily students in the WRPS. It's individuals residing within the school district area. Uh, so that's at 172. So that number hasn't spiked dramatically and it hasn't decreased dramatically. So we're kind of maintaining, you know, little ups and downs uh, from over the last couple of weeks or even the last month at the last uh, city council meeting. So that's, that's the update on that. Thank you. Any questions? Ryan, what is the um, 
positively rate here at the city? Is there, I mean, have you noticed? We don't, we don't have a, we don't have a metric of a positivity rate here at the city. Um, that positivity rate that we're getting off is when people go get tested and that would come off the COVID Act Now website. Yeah, COVIDactnow.com website. That's the positivity percentage rate. So 12%. I couldn't venture a guess because we don't necessarily get reported here to the city who all takes a COVID test that, you know, they're, the employee's not obligated unless they, you know, are ill and need to report that to us. So does that help? Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. Any further discussion from uh, Patrick's concerns? Or any thoughts? Um, no, we were, uh, we've talked about, I, I emailed him earlier today just on a potential uh, metric, I know um, looking at possible numbers to apply, uh, to be able to apply for the emergency leave or, or when to flip that switch. Um, looking at other areas or other communities or other school districts or businesses, I was looking uh, at a potential proposal of about a 10% um, positivity, um, meaning if we had 10% of the active city population um, infected at the same time, that would appropriate us, that would kind of put us at a number of an around 20, um, which was a number we had you know, bantered back and, back and forth, um, would be enough to start to flip that. Um, those, but those mitigating, you know, situations, but we're not there um, at, knock on wood, actually at this point, we're not even close to 10% uh, current. Any other questions? None. We'll move on to number seven. Discuss and consider for approval a request from Mayor Blazer for an organizational restructure of the Department of Public Works, including the elimination of Director of Public Works position. See the attachment, and I will turn it over to the mayor. Well, I guess this is what we're all here for. Um, I guess I'll read my statement. For me, this is pretty straightforward and simple. I was elected to the office of mayor and CEO of this organization, which means that I'm ultimately responsible for making the managerial decisions. This organization and staff need to realize that leadership changes also mean that the public is dissatisfied with the organization and the services being provided. We change our leadership in the hopes that we will change our organization. We have seen plenty of those changes over that uh, not only in the mayor's office, but also on the city council. The citizens want something different. I didn't get to pick my staff, but I must do my best with the existing staff and make changes that I think are best for the organization. This is my responsibility to the taxpayers and electric. In corporate America, downsizing, right sizing happen all the time. You are met at the door with a box to put your contents of the desk in and escort it out. This problem, this is a problem with local government. We elect new leadership, expecting or at least hoping things will be different. But when that structure, culture, staffing, services and positions remain unchanged, we wonder why we keep getting the same results. Look at the very uniqueness of this situation. The Human Resource Committee and ultimately the council will decide if you will allow me to make these changes in this organization, which I believe are the future success of my administration. My question to you is, how am I supposed to fulfill my job responsibilities if you're going to handcuff me to a system that you may not want, but you, aren't res but you may want, but you aren't responsible for managing or supervising it? From my first weeks in office, we have been meeting with the public work staff, listening to suggestions, concerns, challenges, along with the request for additional supervisor and also the discussion around the Park and Rec's department and its location in the organizational structure. And these, dis these discussions are ongoing and continuous. You know, finally it's come to a time that we need to do something. And I've decided that was the time to adjust the organizational structure and evaluate positions within that structure. I, I have complete confidence in the leadership in the street department, wastewater treatment plant, and the engineering department. And so I've attached the organizational charts, which are pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, we have the current organizational chart, 
which to me is very linear, you know, in speaking with um, Paul Ballard, the street superintendent, you know, some of those lead positions do answer, are currently the way they're operating or answering to the street uh, supervisors, which ultimately in my proposed chart, you know, updating the chart, updating the job descriptions, and uh, getting those, you know, where, where the direct reports are. In the proposed chart, you'll see where I pulled the park department out into the existing, or out into its own, own department. It used to be that way years ago. I have very, very confident in leadership out there and in that organization to, you know, maintain our park and rec programming. Um, and so also in there, under the parks department, you'll see a relief supervisor. That wouldn't be a new position, but it would be a delegation. So when the supervisor is off, there would be somebody taking that responsibility. And the only other real change would be, well, another change would be re, uh, reallocating the assistant city engineer position. Um, it wouldn't be for a new position, but a designation for somebody within that department for when the city engineer isn't available, the assistant would be in charge. And then, uh, then the obvious is the elimination of the park and rec, I mean, sort of the public works director. Thank you. Thank you. Committee, any questions? I'd like to make a motion to deny the request. So, yep. Right, generally you make a motion before the discussion anyway, so that the motion would be appropriate. Okay, there's a, okay, thank you. There's a motion on the floor, is there a second? <coughs> Hearing no second, motion fails. Discussion questions, Jerry? Or Dean? I can start. Um, to start with, I feel like this topic was brought up um, at a time when we were supposed to be concentrating on budget information, union contracts, and the transportation utility. Um, to throw this topic into the mix as a non-emergent topic right now, I feel is very reckless and unwarranted. Um, I feel myself, as well as the HR committee, the council, and the administration, have let down the employees and public of Wisconsin Rapids. This topic should have come before the Human Resources Committee as a suggestion, uh, before talking to the public works staff and employees, as well as other staff that this position was going to be eliminated. Employees have contacted me as they are very uncomfortable coming forward to testify, if you will, how they believe this is a mistake, and I hope um, some may speak from the public. Um, how they were told about this decision, I believe, was careless and not very professional. Um, the Human Resources Committee oversees organization um, according to municipal code. This topic should have been presented as a suggestion where we had time to research and discuss um, this recommendation before it comes here to vote on it. Um, People that know me will tell you that I'm very open-minded and will research the positive and negatives of a topic before coming to a conclusion. We are elected by the citizens of Wisconsin Rapids, just like the mayor said, to do exactly that, to do is what's best for the city of Wisconsin Rapids is now is in the future. Um, I just want to remind us that according to Code of Ethics, Chapter 26 in the Municipal Code, specifically 26.02, it indicates that public officials and employees are agents of the public purpose and hold office for the benefit of the public. It also indicates that we are to just our, discharge faithfully the duties of their office regardless of personal consideration, recognizing that the public interest must be their prime concern. Wisconsin, uh, we, as, we as elected officials must thoroughly research and this proposed idea so as the sustainability of the city is not jeopardized. Um, I keep conversations in confidence, but have heard again um, many employees, department heads, that were not happy with this decision and they feel like they didn't get a say um, before it came to be voted on in committee. Um, let's see. Um, according to the Code of Ethics, page 12, the purpose 
um, is to encourage high standards of ethics among city public officials and employees to promote the confidence of city residents in their public officials and employees. Page 21, workplace expectations, the scope. All city employees, volunteers, elected officials, and city council or commission members is committed to providing a productive work environment that fosters communication, teamwork, accountability, and a cooperative attitude. All employees, volunteers, elected officials, council, commission members are expected to display appropriate behavior at all times. I don't feel that that was followed um, according to how we found out about this position, proposed position uh, being eliminated. Also in 3.1, the city strives to ensure that all employees, volunteers, elected officials, and council or council member, commission members are treated in a respectful and fair manner. Um, the following examples are infractions of the rules of conduct that may result in disciplinary action. Um, exhibiting uncooperative or inappropriate conduct or dis disrespectful behavior towards other employees, engaging in any type of harassment or appropriate conduct. And to remind everyone, the city has a zero tolerance policy for harassment in the workplace, engaging in a conduct that causes or contributes to disruptive or conflicting team relationships. And as well, I wanna remind um, for any employees that want to talk, 3.7 is retaliation consistent with regulations set forth in federal and state laws and the city's policy, the city will discipline any individual who retaliates against a person who reports alleged violations of this policy. The city also reserves the right to discipline any individual who retaliates against any participant in investigation or hearing related to the report of alleged violations. I believe this policy was broken as department heads were told that the per person in this position that oversees their department was going to be eliminated he um, instructed staff um, not to include director of public works dollars in the budget, as well as instructing a department head not to include the entire department of public works budget within the 22 budget that we were presented. Again, as it is today, there is a public works director and it should have come before the, the um, HR committee first. Um, it should have been presented here, then the department heads, not the other way around. This has resulted in low morale, a lack of confidence already within the organizational structure and fear of speaking their expert advice on how this could impact their department is operated in an efficient and effective way. The way that this proposal was told to department heads clearly violates the concept of constructive team relationships. Um, department heads were told their opinions didn't count. Council members found out about this proposal through gossip through the city hall, as well as employees reaching out to us on the HR committee, as well as the council. Um, I was not told directly um, by the mayor himself that this was something that they were, or he was thinking of doing. Um, I received, again, numerous phone calls and emails from department heads and employees, many who were not even associated with the public works department at all. Um, I watched the videotapes of the Public Works and Common Council meetings of 2015 before the Department of Public Works director was hired. Some of the highlights that were repeated throughout the meetings, I know I talked to uh, Ty Marome as well as he was involved in those. Um, we, over $10,000 for each type of professional services agreements to MSA for stormwater services, management, writing utility grants. Um, they also assisted the, assisted the engineering department for um, new development when companies would come in. I don't believe that is the case now. Public Works Committee mentioned numerous times that coordination between Water Works and Lighting Commission and the storms, street stormwater waste management activities did not exist. Um, coordination between Water Light and City Hall was very rare and many times resulted in duplication of road work, et cetera, costing taxpayers more than what they should have been. Many times I also heard the engineer indicate they didn't know what water, lights, water works and lighting commission schedule was and that they each have their own standards um, which didn't match. The committee members were primarily the ones who chose where and when to create merged lanes, turn lanes, street lighting, um, I watched one meeting where they talked probably for about 40 minutes on where lighting was going to be. Many times I heard the members say that we aren't policy experts, but they did the best that they could. Um, wastewater was not meeting code. 
um, or the goals. Um, Jim Netzel was on there many times. Um, they had some big trouble. I'm not a wastewater guy, I don't know, but it, it wasn't good. Um, they actually had a contract with Strand, Strand Associates for wastewater services. Um, they were having issues with the filament and sludge. As I am, or as it is today, um, I believe that we're kind of being recognized for the proactive approach that we have and the system that we have in place now. Um, I thought it was very interesting in 2015 um, when Adam Teagan was here and he was talking about the Reggie, um, it was interesting to hear how important it is to have excellent infrastructure and coordination between all levels of public works. One supervisor overseeing all the other departments. Um, I also was kind of confused because if, if it was a dollar amount, um, I've attended or watched all meetings of the council since I've been on in April. And not once have I heard the city was in need to cut approximately $100,000 from the budget. I haven't heard um, any committee or anyone saying that they needed to look at a position from somewhere. Um, I did receive a message from the finance, finance director, um, Tim DeSorcy, that the director of public works position is approximately 1% of the entire public works budget, which is about 35% of the city budget. Um, I guess I just have some questions. After reading the committee referral letter, I would be interested in knowing, um, Mayor, I know you said you've struggled with the organizational structure of the Public Works Department and staff has been aware of it. What struggles or problems um, have there been? Um, what research and concrete evidence do you have that elimination of this position would help the city and become more sustainable? Um, were you aware of the reasons why the position was vacant? I don't know if many of you know there was a public works. Um, it was eliminated for approximately 10, 10 years. Um, and it was brought back um, because departments felt they were siloed. There was no coordination between departments. Each department functioned as its own. Um, it would be a cost savings to the city, but at what cost? Um, I don't know how that could be tax, saving tax dollars when eventually we're going to run, run into issues. I do know that you said that you are confident with the department heads that are hired now knowing their jobs, which is true. I think they are an awesome bunch. However, most of them are newer. They were hired knowing that there was a director of public works to perhaps guide them, not saying they don't know their job duties. But when you're getting into a, when you're hired for a position and you know that there's someone in there that has the qualifications for wastewater streets, um, in, an, in, an, in an essence an expert in that, that would, could have played in the role of whether they wanted to take it or not, if they know they have someone that they can ask questions to. Um, and I'm just confused, and I guess I'm just nervous because I know how you say it with the new uh, proposed organizational chart um, that the streets wastewater engineer and park uh, let's see park and building superintendent um, would report to you not saying that you wouldn't be able to do it per se but how are you an expert in those fields where um, now if there's a problem um, I'm sure the engineering department um, contacts the director of public works wastewater they all refer to the department of, or the director of public works. How could you help them in those situations, I guess is what I'm asking. Um, let's see. Um, where else should we go? Sorry. And, and I feel if you felt that the department of public works wasn't functioning, let's say to your standards, or as you indicated that um, the citizens are not happy with with the services that are happening now, what, what process did you take to, to accumulate those findings or to find those out? Um, you know, you, you said that you kind of, you met with some um, supervisors. Um, you said since you, since you were elected mayor, um, but from what I've been hearing is that um, from some employees there haven't been department head meetings um, you know, was there a way that if something wasn't happening according to what the citizens wanted 
or if you're feeling like something wasn't happening at the public works director, was there a process in place to, to as our municipal code states, um, team building and um, coming up with good ideas to advance um, within the city? I, I don't see that as well. Um, let's see. Um, I handed, I did some research, of course, um, and it says that the director of public works um, position is on a projected 4% increase according to studies. Um, if you pass this um, and the city starts to fail, as I feel it will, because if you look at the years before a public works director was here, it was not in a good place. Yes, we have new young educated people that are running the wastewater in the streets. Um, but in a silo effect, I, I just don't see how in this day and age we work team building, we work together, um, so we know we're all working together towards one goal. If you silo those departments, I don't see how that can happen. Um, and I just am really nervous because we eliminated this position one time. Um, now if the city of Wisconsin Rapids eliminates this twice, and it fails. How successful the city can be um, in retaining a new position, a highly skilled applicant, when the eliminate or the position has been eliminated twice. Um, I know the department or the director of public works was nervous about taking this position because it had happened once. Now it happens twice, and something happens. What thinking forward? What are you going to do? How are we going to get somebody in here when, when the city fails? Um, I'm, that makes me very nervous. Makes me very nervous. Um, I think for now that's all I have. I don't know if you can answer any of those questions for me. Um, Thank you. Sure, you have a couple questions for you. Um, you keep talking, going back to these silos. Could you maybe explain that a little bit? In many of the meetings that I watched from 2015, the public works um, meetings, it was mentioned many times, the silos, that each entity within public works tried operating as their own. So. Each was their own boss, each was their own department, and that's what they worried about. Um, streets worried about this. Um, engineering worried, worried about this. And I think it's very evident that, I mean, it was brought up a couple weeks ago, I believe. Um, water and light, when they needed something fixed, they, they would tear up a road and they would, they would do it. Well, then next year or the year after, something with streets or wastewater or something like that needed to be replaced. Now we rip the road up and we do it again. There was no coordination of activities and that was mentioned many times um, in the public works meetings in 2015. Um, we didn't know what Water and Light was doing. Um, everyone operates as if they were their own and that's um, in the findings that I emailed about five different municipalities from different public works directors as well as mayors. And I handed them out to the council members. I know you didn't have a ample time to review everything, but they all indicate the same thing, that when you, when you have departments trying to operate as their own, it's not going to be successful. Um, does that answer your question? Well, I, I guess just a comment. I, I would expect that every one of our department heads are going to be the champion for their department, correct? Yes. And I, I think regardless if you have this position or not, you're going to have some of that going on. Do we agree on that? And do you think it's happening right now? Is what happening right now? Do you, do you think we've got these silos right now? I do not believe we do. Anybody else from the 
Bean, anything? Thank you. Go ahead, Sherry. And I agree, um, Dean, to that, that I think the supervisors for each of the departments, as it is now, are very responsible for their department. However, we're looking at uh, the big picture. So who, who's going to be coordinating? I mean, if, if Parks has their own, so if they need equipment, who, who's, who's coordinating all that? with different equipment and coordination um, between water and light and the different, the different, if you, you, you have the different departments, you have wastewater as their own and park and building by their own and streets under their own, engineering under their own. Who's, who's coordinating between, between them when work needs to be done? Is it they don't share equipment they don't so if 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 streets has a project and then there's a water I, water main or something or different things like that who's who's going to coordinate that those activities so if and it happened once probably more than once so if if streets needs to be done and it's on their schedule that they're going to do the street and they're going to do the street. And then, like I said, somebody else has some, some issue with that. Is there coordination between the departments? Someone to oversee so that it's all... Okay, so if they do that and then a year later something else needs to be done, then the street gets ripped up again. I'm just saying that... I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Director of Public Works, is that, uh, do you want, I mean. Yeah, re real briefly to that, there, there were a number of examples where um, a street was repaired. One of the utilities decided, again, working in their own silo, they really didn't want to participate in the reconstruction of that street. Strawberry Lane is a great example. A couple years later, that brand new street that the residents paid for their assessments is getting torn up, and it doesn't matter who tears it up. It's, it's a city vehicle. Um, when I started, we had uh, um, Apple Street is an example. Um, the engineering department was responsible for a lot of the sidewalk maintenance work, handicap ramps, things like that. Um, handicap ramps on Apple Street were, uh, were repaired. Two years later, we rebuilt Apple Street, and all the handicap ramps got ripped up. If we have uh, a project where the street department's performing maintenance and they're gonna do some chip seal maintenance, do some asphalt patching, 
Uh, maybe there's some curb repairs or some other uh, manhole structures to be repaired. That chip seal has, you know, its, its lifespan depends on how old the street is to start with, but say it has, a, you know, generally an 8 to 12 year life, and the engineering department's working on plans to rebuild that street in three years, we just threw away a bunch of money on chip seal. We didn't get the full life out of it. So that's, that's what the, the coordination, Public Works is a dynamic um, department. There's a number of facets, and, and coordination is, is essential to efficiency. Go ahead, Sherry. And another question I have, um, so we're really not adding any more positions per se. We're going to rename a staff in the engineering department as the assistant city engineer. Um, so with all the work that we're ahead of in the engineering department um, now, but they're going to be taking on more responsibilities will they have time to focus on what their duties are and who who is their um, person and I don't want to say they're not knowledgeable I don't mean it that way but um, who how do they know who to um, contact I know um, in the past um, the director of public works um, has worked with the DNR um, in many different entities, now that will be the actual the engineer, the the wastewater. Um, they'll be doing all of their own research on their own. Not that they don't now, to some degree, but are they all knowledgeable for those types of things? I guess I'm looking at um, that they would be directing or they would be. Um, overseen by the mayor so is is could the mayor be a liaison um, for all those departments I guess I just have a couple comments to yours and then we'll move on if if Matt or, or Tom would like to speak then we'll move on Mr. Terry I know has got something he'd like to stand up if the mayor doesn't want to respond before but um, just a couple things two things first of all about a year and a half ago we added an engineer a full-time engineer into the engineering department about a year and a half ago correct last year okay the other thing that's happened since then is we've added a full-time supervisor in the street department and then going back to one of your other points I would fully expect that everybody that we have running departments now are experts in their fields and the mail can the mayor can rely on their advice and information from them so with that being said uh, Tom would you like to add anything Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, at this point in time, not not a lot, but because uh, I'd be re echoing, uh, I guess, uh, restating uh, probably a lot what Sherry has said. Uh, I think uh, what might be the simplest is that, and I think that's part part of what she's getting at too, is uh, uh, Any team, I think, that you have, uh, if it's baseball, football, whatever, uh, you have the players, the manager, the GM, whatever, all pitching coaches, catching coaches and that. So it might not be the right uh, way to go about this, but uh, all the people that we have are very knowledgeable people in these departments. What we have done here in the past, um, it, here in the last six years with the hiring of Mr. Terry, is that uh, we've Put the, I guess in uh, football terminology is, who's calling the plays? Maybe, that's the way to say it. Now, it could be the manager on the sidelines, or might be somebody upstairs relaying it down. 
some teams do let the quarterback do it. Not too many anymore. Um, what I've seen is that, uh, and I think Sherry's been getting to it and a little bit that Joel had here, is that um, we have the We have the team, we have the coaches, which are the superintendents in that. And now we have, we put them all under this roof. And in one form or another report to the public works director. Another analogy would be that in the paper mill where I worked, you had a wood room, bleach plant, wet room, digesters, power department, lime kiln, tall oil, craft mill. Uh, that was the oversee. But uh, there were different bosses, supervisors in those different departments. But in the craft mill, then you had a craft mill superintendent was over the craft mill. And that's kind of what, uh, what like this is like. And at least in uh, my time, in the last uh, six years that we've had this, I have seen a very um, cohesive, cohesive uh, effort made if things weren't uh, maybe right or that if somebody got drifted away or something that it was brought to attention and it was corrected. But that's why I think you need the, somebody with the expertise that knows all of these uh, departments. We have have strengthened over the six, word, week, uh, six years, uh, improved, I think, a lot. I would hate to see us go backwards. Uh, I just... Uh, I would like everybody that can vote to uh, take another step back and think about it. Uh, this has been on, the, I guess, the table for a few weeks now, but this is, as far as I know, the initial conversation officially that has taken place. And that myself, I don't think that uh, I guess the discussion can take place to eliminate, but I think on the other hand, we already show a minus in the uh, budget calculation, and uh, that's just not, to me anyway, the right way to do it until something had already been taken place. So uh, we're in the, in the initial discussions of what we want to do. Obviously, where I'm coming from, at, uh, that I uh, 
uh, support to uh, keep the uh, public works director. It's, uh, I think, a very important job with the number of departments that we have, the number of people, superintendents under that person, and the people in all of those affected departments. And so I would, uh, as this is the first step in the process, but I would uh, encourage uh, this committee to really uh, think about this. If this is really the right route that they should go, but that we should go as a city. And also, again, just to say what I said a minute ago, is this is that we're in the first, uh, really the first uh, um, discussions of this. Um, Sherry, I know, has put a lot of uh, research and effort into this, into all the meetings and that, and uh, old tapes that she could acquire to see what was done, and I commend her for that. And I've asked her information myself. Actually, I was around at the time when these things were done, so <laughs> um, it, uh, but it refreshes your memory to go back anyway. So it's a uh, so I just, uh, to move on, and if Joe's going to speak or whoever, uh, I said I was going to be short. I guess I'm starting to get long-winded like I, and that I do at times. But uh, uh, I just feel that uh, the position has uh, um, become a very important one in the organi organizational structure of the city, uh, the Public Works Department, in whole, in entirety. And I think that uh, it's a, uh, that to have a uh, Public Works Superintendent is that then that's a, uh, again, that that's the, uh, for all the other, the individual superintendents over the departments, that that's the play caller to go to. And I think that's what has to be done without the individual departments running on their own. Uh, nothing against the individual superintendents. But as we've been doing, I think, to me anyway, it looks like it's a more cohesive effort that's taking place. That everybody seems to know what everybody is doing. And that that's, I, I just support to uh, try and retain that position, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Tom. Matt, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I feel like the problem we run into, uh, there's been a couple of analogies made between, uh, you know, for-profit entities where, you know, that ultimately you're, you're asking about the leader. We have our, our coaches who are the superintendents, but is our leader uh, Department of Public Works Director, or is our leader the mayor with the city council who have been elected? Because the problem we face is, like a football team, they can do whatever they want. As long as they keep people coming in and paying money, they, they can fire whoever they want. When they fire them, they fire them, they're gone. Whereas right now, we've kind of set ourselves up in a position where without the people of our city, we don't have a city. I mean, we can all hoorah ourselves and pat ourselves on the back, but 
if there's no people in the city, there is no city. None of this matters. So the people do count, and the people elected us, and the people elected the mayor. The mayor's the leader. The mayor is the one who has the vision. You know, when, as far as I can see in the past, there's possibly two types of mayors, and I'm not looking to insult anybody, but there's mayors who want to do the mayoral responsibilities that are deemed by the, uh, you know, responsibilities of a mayor when he's elected mayor. If that mayor doesn't want to do the responsibilities, then they can hire somebody else to do the responsibilities of running the city. And then, and then that person doesn't have the responsibilities to the people who should have elected them, that that position has the responsibility almost to nobody except for the people in, you know, internally. They, they have the ability to go to all the different departments and get everybody involved in what shouldn't necessarily be going on. I mean, you, you enlightened us to what was going on. I think you referred to it as the rumor mill. And at that point in time, I appreciate you, you being, in my take on it, is involved in the rumor mill enough that you had that information and let us know about it. I think that was good. Um, but I guess my question is, just in going back, like, like the procedures on how this should have happened, um, my take on it from people calling me afterwards, people from in the city, uh, to find out my take or to get my sway or to try to sway me one way or the other. So then I ask questions of them to find out what they're going through and what they're going through is like this internal thing. So as far as, so then I ask more questions and from my understanding is uh, Mayor Blazer went directly to the public works uh, director and told him what was happening in confidence. That's where it should have stayed. Never should have went outside of there. As far as I understand, it should have stayed right there. And then those two should have talked it out until he was able to take it to the, the right people and the, in the right committee. Um, but the fact that there's so much up, un, upheaval and instability and fear and all this stuff, that was, as far as I can understand, that wasn't caused by, by Mayor Blazer. Um, so I could go on and on about this, but in the end... Um, we're the leaders, and Mayor Blazer's the leader, and I realize it's, it's not as simple as saying, hey, uh, GM, you're fired, or whatever, because we're seeing that it doesn't work that way. But I think in the end, the people elect the leadership, and that leadership should be able to make the changes they deem necessary to win the games and uh, you know, be stable for their team and bring the cohesion together and move forward as, a, as, a, as one unit. And I think that us as a leadership team have all the power to do that. And I think that all of our coaches are very well trained. And if we need to get them more training to be able to sit down in a room and say, could we figure out how to uh, fix the utilities and the road and this road so that we don't have to do it for 30 years and move on to the next road the next year and the next year? I, I don't I think that they can do that and then ultimately it's Mayor Blazer be able to say, Okay, you guys need to sit down and these are our capital improvements. They're the same every year and we check them off when we go forward and to provide that leadership so that our coaches can be on the same page. I have complete faith that we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor it, I I went and spoke to Joel, but uh, I didn't say it had to stay in confidence. Um I wanted him to know up front, you know, we'll maybe hear from some department heads, but even, even the fact I couldn't go to his direct reports and ask them, what's your concern if I do this? Because in fairness to Joe, it, they shouldn't hear before him. So, but I didn't ask him to keep it in confidence, so. Real quick, Jay, and I, uh, when, you know, when I, that relating, and I hope, uh, that uh, the director would be over all of it. Just to relate back though to what the current, currently the, how it's set up, is that all this comes back together and then at the director of public works, but then there is another line that goes there, that goes up to the mayor. So, you know, there is, it's not that the, 
uh, mayor is out of this. It's just how this the setup is. And so these, it's a director that's over these, but the mayor is then within, you know, within this. So just wanted to clarify this so there's not a mistake uh, or misunderstanding anyway, so. Thank you. I guess the last one, Mr. Austin, if you can hear me, do you have anything you'd like to add? Because he's muted. Okay. Oh, I guess he can, he'll have an opportunity later. Uh, if there's no other questions from the committee or the council, Mr. Terry, uh, the floor. Thank you. <clears throat> Public Works is the city's largest and most complex department, requiring expert technical leadership. With multiple divisions and total expenses, including the utilities, of around 20 million annually, it's larger than the rest of the city's departments combined. Before the Public Works Director position was recreated in 2015, the, public's work, the Public Works Department was struggling. Every department head was frustrated. I know this because I asked them before I agreed to come work here. And so were the elected officials, and they informed me of such. A lack of leadership and direction left department heads working in silos, just trying to keep their heads above water. There was a general lack of respect between the divisions. The wastewater group was disrespectfully referred to as the island of misfit boys. And plant operation was less than desirable. The various division heads clashed regularly and insults were lobbed behind others' backs. There was little coordination between the divisions within the Public Works Department, and even less between Public Works and other utilities. The whole was not greater than the sum of its parts. In 2015, um, Alderman Bemke was on the city crew, and he asked me the question, when will the city consider Public Works an asset instead of a liability? Well, that's not a question anymore. All of this has changed dramatically under the guidance and leadership of a Public Works director. In just six years, the street division is now performing more maintenance activities, is better organized, has better equipment so staff can work smarter and safer. The city is relying on less outside contractors for parks, urban forestry, and building maintenance. The wastewater division has two employees prestigiously awarded for excellence. The plant is operating better than ever, and the collection system crew is televising maintaining more of the city's wastewater and stormwater systems than ever before. The engineering division is completing more projects, is more focused, is putting out more detailed plan sets, and is better organized. This, this wasn't an accident. There's now synergy and mutual respect between work groups, and we resolve conflict professionally. The city has performed several legacy projects since 2015, and three of those have received recognition awards for excellence, with the Westside Lift Station Force Main Project receiving a prestigious national award of excellence from the American Public Works Association. Public Works Director initiatives include the city's real-time street closure map, degradation ordinance, utility coordinating and permitting, our on-site pre-construction meetings, GIS integration into our maintenance work, our transportation utility, and, and I could go on for a long time. And that has attracted the attention of public works officials statewide. They're calling us and asking us questions. In fact, the Wisconsin chapter of the American Public Works Association with a membership of over 800 public and private public works professionals nominated me as the Wisconsin candidate for 2021 and again in 2022 to be considered for APWA's most prestigious and coveted National Leadership Award. Public Works Director initiatives, leadership, and negotiation skills have resulted in new revenues, savings, and the repurposing of staff that is generating around $1 million in new revenues and $100,000 in savings annually. Annually. 
That's a thousand percent rate of return on investment on the director's base salary. On top of that is $8.8 .8 million in urban forestry, transportation, wastewater, and other grants for special projects. Now, when you consider the other utilities, the public work director's salary is one half of 1% of the department expenses. And for comparison with our other departments, police and fire chiefs are the next closest at 2% of their budgets, and it goes up from there. My vision as public works director is to provide the best public works service and value possible, focusing upon our strengths and improving upon any weaknesses, not focusing on our weaknesses and ignoring our strengths. So the city has an important matter at hand. Does it return back to an organizational structure that has proven itself ineffective and is led by someone with little to no public works experience? Or does it continue down the path of measured success with a public works expert directing the department where it has clearly been demonstrated the whole is much greater than the sum of its parts? Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Terry. And I will say that, yes, I, I did probably make those comments more than one time that um, we were recognized as an asset. And, and as an employee, I did appreciate that. But I keep hearing about the silos. I'm not sure that the silos exist. I'm not sure that the silos don't exist now. Um, I, and I guess the other thing that bothers me is going back, and I think we probably have somebody in the audience tonight that can speak to this a little bit is questioning the leadership and the success of the organization maybe 10 or 15 years ago. I think what we're here to discuss tonight is does the mayor have the ability to decide what his staff is going to be? Um, and I would really would like to stay on topic. So, Why does, it, The organizational structure is up to the council, not, not the mayor. Well, I mean, I just so, want to be, right, so you the can mayor, certainly just, right, so, so but this, I want to be clear on that. Sorry. That that it would be right. It, that's pretty much the statutory Correct. framework. That it's your decision, not his. He can choose who to put in those positions. He can hire people and fire people. But he needs to work within the framework that you that you right. So I just want to be clear on that. So, okay, I, I'll take that back. We are here to discuss the mayor's proposal and take action. Correct. With that being said, does anybody have any on the on the committee have any questions of Mr. Terry? Dean, Terry, go ahead. For for Miss, yeah, for him. Very good. Um, Sue, so is this the port where we open it to the, to the public, or we missed that already? Or? I, or you can recognize people if you if you wish. I mean, I, it's up to the council. But I think generally. I, I think, in all fairness, anybody here that. Right. Came to speak tonight. Should be given an opportunity to speak. So, um, see two hands up. Ladies before gentlemen, please. <laughs> Mary Jo. Yep. When you come up, could you please state your name and address? Thank you. Oh, it wasn't bright enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Mary Jo Carson. I live at 2810 14th Street South. Um, and I was your mayor, and I was proud of it. I was mayor from 2006 to 2012. And I did not see the need for a public works director because when I was mayor, all these people remember, we had a flood. We had, we had huge hailstorms, and we had department heads who actually worked together, as they do now. We didn't have any trouble solving the problem. It wasn't fun. I remember at one staff meeting, they, meeting, they asked if they should all quit, because the next thing we were going to have was locust. Uh, we didn't get the locust invasion, but we had everything else. I just didn't see the need because the people at the top of each department worked so well together and took care of what they needed to do within their own departments. Could they find me? Sure. Did we meet regularly? Yes. 
did we spend time saying, oh, how are we going to fix this? I'll tell you, the flood was a big threat. It was no fun at all for anybody. The hailstorm wasn't either. We replaced 8,000 roofs in this town. You know what happens when people come to the city clerk's office and they want a permit and they're crooks? And then they call our residents and they're still crooks? Joe knows about them. Um, and I've worked with Joe for years. When I worked for the state, I've known Joe forever. So this is not personal, period. This is about your budget and about your debt service and what we can afford to pay for. Now, you may not be looking for $100,000 now. Trust me, you'll get there. And it shouldn't be on his, on his shoulders. It'll come from somewhere. This is a tough job, and again, I thank you all for doing it. There aren't enough people willing to come forward and do this job. It's hard work. It requires patience. And gee whiz, you got to listen to each other, which you're real good at. So I think the world of Joe, he's a good man. I, there, there, I have no objections to him personally or professionally. But you need to look at the people that run the departments. Trust me, they're good folks. They know what they're doing. And I know they can carry this burden again. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Koloth. Good evening. Uh, my name is Stephen Koth. I reside at 481 Plover Street in the city of Wisconsin Rapids. So I used to sit on the council, and I was on the council six years ago when Director Terry was hired. At that time, to make that decision, all I had to go on was a resume and uh, what we were told for qualifications. I'm not going to make any uh, big secret about it. I lean towards the conservative side of voting. I'm all about saving money. I was kind of torn on my vote six years ago because I wanted to do the right thing and save the city money. But I also wanted to see what we could do with a public works director. Alderperson Evanson alluded tonight to the 2015 Public Works Committee minutes where a road would be redone, resurfaced, paved, and then subsequently later tore up because there was utilities underneath it that needed to be replaced. I didn't save the taxpayers any money. We had a, another part of the city utility that would come to us and say, the water pipes are 100 years old, the sewer can't be lined, we need to fix this. So subsequently, as a committee, we would vote to rip up a road that we just replaced and put new infrastructure underneath it. That was a waste of taxpayer money. That was my fault when I was on that committee. After we hired Joe, Joe was very good at putting together reports and identifying how to save the city money. One of the projects Joe undertook was he come up with maps, prioritize the roads that need to be fixed because in our budget, we only have enough money, unless it's changed now, but in six months since I've been off the council, but we had enough money in our budget to repair nine tenths of, nine -tenths of one mile of road per year. With a lot of roads in Rapids, nine tenths of a mile isn't a whole lot. Director Terry implemented a plan to identify the roads that were in the most critical need of repair and subsequently reached out to the utilities to see which infrastructure needed the most critical repair so that we were only doing the project one time. That is a cost savings to the cities. I'm not going to lie, when I was on the council, I know people have had disagreements with Director Terry. Not gonna lie, 
There's been days I've walked out of a committee meeting or out of a council meeting, and I've been steamed with Director Terry for his position on something. But I also realize that I have to separate personal opinion from professional duty. And I can tell you that if I ever had a question for Director Terry, I could come down here and talk to him. He would make the time. If I had questions, he would get the answers. Furthermore, when the council has made bad decisions that have impacted citizens, Director Terry had enough testicular fortitude to come with me to a citizen's complaint and take half the heat that I would take. He's very good at his job and he does it well. I'm not saying that our department heads nor am I not, not saying that the mayor is not capable of doing the job. I want to make that clear. I do want to make it clear that since Director Terry was hired in 2015, I think he has done a good job. If Director Terry was in his office with a latte, playing games on Facebook, I would have advocated for his removal from the position when I was in office. I don't feel Joe has done a bad job. That's why I'm here tonight to speak in favor of asking you to retain his position. And if there's any question on doing it, I'm going to tell you another thing I learned from when I was on council too. There's often a joke when we walked into the room before we'd be seated and somebody would ask, who brought the rubber stamp? The joke comes because sometimes we just shoved things through council. I done it too. In July of 2020, when on a narrow vote, we voted to geo-restrict the aquatic center to residents of Wisconsin Rapids only. This decision caused an immediate drop in morale at the aquatic center. It caused people to want to quit and it disenfranchised people in the adjacent communities to us. Subsequently, when the problem was identified, we had to have a special council meeting to undo the decision that was made two days earlier. And I took responsibility for my decision and apologized to the public for doing that. Jay, you probably remember that meeting. So if there's any thing I want you guys to learn from that lesson is, don't grab the rubber stamp and send something through just because it needs to be sent through. Take the time to vet the issue. Look at it all the way around. Hold it in committee. Talk about it. Get more ideas. Talk to more employees. Get more feedback. Look at, look at the performance of the city with a public works director and without a public works director on paper. It's all there. Anyone can find it. So I know everyone's been here for a while and a lot of people have spoken on this issue. I don't want to keep anyone away from dinner any longer. But just all I can ask the council to do is make sure that you look at the issue thoroughly. Because I sat in a seat for six years and I made a lot of bad decisions. And I've either had to go to city employees or residents and explain the bad decisions that I made. If Joe is truly, truly a bad employee, and or if the cost savings of $100,000, $120,000 a year is worth it, then pull the job. But if you can find the proof that says otherwise, that has shown the results that have been delivered, I think the results would more than speak for themselves. I've seen them. And that's the only reason I'm here tonight to advocate to keep Director Terry. Because he is, since the time he was hired, in my heart of hearts, I believe he has delivered the results that he promised when he was hired in September of 2015. Mr. Chairman, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yes, Mayor. So, when this position was brought forth, it was brought forth by the mayor at that time, correct? It that wasn't a council's choice. 
the council didn't come up with the idea for the position the mayor did? That is correct. So that at that time, the mayor felt that's what he needed to operate the city? That, it, that would be correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Chief? All right. <clears throat> so, ideally, I'd do this at the council meeting and talk, but Friday's my last day, so I'm going to talk now. So, department head to department head, Joel has been um, a professional to work with. I'd speak a little bit on his character. He's honest, trustworthy, ethical, um, truly professional to work with and, and work with. And then it comes down to I'm looking at this as um, do you need a public's director or not? And, I, I can't speak to the street department. I don't have any idea how the street department works. But you start looking at the organizational structure and what makes you more effective, more efficient. And I, I, I'm trying to see this and relate it to the fire department. We have EMS, we have fire, we have special operations, confined space, vehicle extrication, water rescue, hazmat. You're talking about silos and everybody oversees each of those areas of operations. We have officers dedicated to those areas. And what makes us more, more effective and efficient is somebody overseeing them, but having somebody to answer to a department head, which is me as the fire chief. I set the directions, we set the goals, we set expectations, we do planning. And I would think in the public work setting, having one person doing that for all of the departments would make it more effective and more efficient as far as standard operating procedures, policies and procedures being overseen, as far as budget. And I, I think there is value in having a public works director to oversee all of those areas of operations, one person to take responsibility, one person that the buck stops with him. Um, it's not easy being a department head. I, we do, we make tough decisions, um, not always popular, but the decisions being made are based in the city's best interest. And I think having a public works director um, comp accomplishes that. So that's all I got to share. Thank you, Chief. Again, congratulations and thank you for your service. Anybody have any questions of the Chief? If not, anybody else from the audience? Um, Ms. Schill. We are to the point in the agenda, then I would guess, if nobody has anything else. Um, closed session. Item number eight. The, the committee may go into closed session pursuant to section 19.851C of the Wisconsin statutes, which reads, Considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over the governmental body has ju jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. Um, is there a motion to go into closed session? Is there a motion to go into closed session? Second. All those in favor? All right. Opposed? Two ayes and one nay. <clears throat> ayes have it. At this point, we will ask all the non-elected officials to leave, and we will go into closed session. And do I need to note that we will open? Okay. Um, in closed session, the committee may discuss compensation for a public employee. The committee will return to open session. Thank you. Request from Mayor Blazer for an organizational restructure of the Department of Public Works, including the elimination of the Director of Public Works position. See attached. Um, committee, what are your wishes? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Two ayes and one nay. Uh, item number 10. Adjournment. Zero motion. Second. All those in favor? 
Aye. Ayes have it. Meeting is adjourned at 8 o'clock.